So let's take a look at how easy it is to use blocks to add event notification handlers, in this case to a view controller. I'm going to create a simple single view application, which contains nothing more dramatic than a UE text field. Then I'll add observers, which listen for keyboard notifications, and react to them using blocks as handlers. So let's go ahead and do it. We'll call the project handler. We won't need storyboard as we don't need to define any transitions at all in this application. We will use automatic reference counting as a matter of principle from now on. And we'll click next and we'll save it. We'll first get rid of this right hand pane as we don't need it. And we'll take a look at what we have here. We have a very simple application. We have a nib file. So let's go into the nib file. And what we want to do here is we want to add a single text field here and be able to listen to when the keyboard opens, when somebody goes into the text field to start typing. And when they finish typing, we'll want to actually find out when the keyboard closes. So let's just set up a couple of things first to get everything in place. Right, first thing we're going to do is we're going to put on a nice text field. Make it a decent size. Let's go and change a few things around here. Let's change the background of the screen to make it look a little bit more interesting. And then we'll go back to our text field. We'll open up the assistant editor. We'll go to connections and from the did end on exit, we're going to drag down and we're going to create a new action here. And the action is going to be called keyboard return. Now, I'm sure you know why we're doing this. We're doing this so that we can detect when the user hits return on the keyboard. And when they do hit return on the keyboard, then we'll just cause the keyboard to close. Otherwise, we'll find we'll run the application. The person will click in the text field. The keyboard will come up. They'll type something. And then there's no way out. Before we put any actions in, for that IB action. Let's just run it and show you what I mean. There we have the keyboard. We can type something in the keyboard. Um, it worked. Marvelous. Okay, so let's go back to the code. Let's go and look in our view controller implementation file. We've actually got no code at all in here at the moment, apart from our keyboard return method that was added. Let's go and add a little bit of code in the view did load method. Now what we're going to add here is we're going to add our handler block. And what we're going to do is just tidy up a little bit. Okay, so what do we have here? We're adding an observer for the UE keyboard did show notification to our app's default notification center, running it in the main queue, and we're using a block, and in this case, we're defining the block in line, so this is effectively like an anonymous function. And the block is taking in the notification, and all we're going to do here is we're going to say the keyboard appeared. Now, Often the problem with the design of our interfaces is that we can have a little bit too much on the interface and we can have a keyboard covering up items at the bottom of the screen. Now, you may want to use this particular notification to find out when the keyboard has appeared and to move the screen up so that the user can type into the bottom text field, which would normally be covered up, should that be where they are currently entering data one example of where you might use that. Let's just run this now and see what happens. And let's just type in some text. And yes, just close it. We didn't see much going on in the trace window. So let's close this and just open up the trace window. There we were. Our handler traced out the text. Keyboard appeared. Let's just take this and copy it, and paste it. I just love the way all of this indenting happens here. Okay. And we'll change this 
who did hide. And keyboard closed. Let's just clear the log to make it clear what's happening. We run it. There's a keyboard opening. And there's a keyboard closing. Again, if this text field here was further down here and would normally be covered when the keyboard appears, we could use these listeners to move the screen up and then to move the screen down again afterwards. Now, one benefit of using blocks in this context is that we don't have to define separate selectors, so we don't have a lot more code down here. We don't have to overcomplicate our code. It's a lot easier on the eye, it's a lot easier to maintain, and it's a lot easier to test and debug and find out where things may or may not be going wrong. What we can also do, of course, is we could actually have, we may have various instant variables here in our view did load, and we may want to make them available to code within our block processing here. Now, with separate selectors, that wouldn't be possible. We would have to define variables for the actual class as opposed to instant variables here within the view did load. So let's take a look at setting up a little instant variable here. Let's set up a string and we'll call it imaginatively string. And I'll initialize it to hello. There we are. Okay. Now what we can do in here is then Try to echo out what we've put in our string. So let's run that. Open things up down here. Let's go in here. And there we are. The keyboard appeared and string said, hello, hello string. Now, you can't really do that with a normal selector. So there's another benefit of using blocks. We may have various instant variables set up within our view did load, which are going to need to be accessed by the block. And if we want to actually update them by the block, we can use the double underscore block qualifier to make them not only read write, to make them also writable. Coding handlers like this using blocks is certainly easy and requires a lot less code than using separate handler methods and assigning via selectors. It also has the bonus of opening up instant variables to your handler code within the block, as you've just seen. And it makes the code a lot more flexible and makes blocks the natural choice for notification handlers wherever you can use them in your code.